So Donald Trump right now is running dead even with Joe Biden. Could he win? He could if he keeps going to Dairy Queen, maybe. Hello, guys, and welcome back to my channel. And just in case you don't know by now, I love Ben Shapiro, and I always love to hear about stories from his own point of view. So this one is uh, Trump went to uh, Dairy Queen, and it's hilarious. Let's take a look, guys. So Donald Trump right now is running dead even with Joe Biden. Could he win? He could if he keeps going to Dairy Queen, maybe. Donald Trump is, by every metric, by every available metric, Donald Trump is a very, very unpopular candidate. According to the latest polls, Donald Trump's spread in terms of approval rating is around 17%. Only 39%, the same polls from the Real Clear Politics polling average that shows Trump beating Biden has him at like 38.9% favorable, 55.8% unfavorable. The most positive job approval rating numbers for for Donald Trump come from mid-June from Harvard Harris. They had him at 45%. Every other poll has him below 43% and some have him in the low 30s. So typically speaking, you would say Republicans would be better off running somebody else. But the thing is this, whatever people think about Donald Trump is baked into the cake. And so what's happening right now is that it's not that this is a referendum. Maybe it's not a referendum on Trump. Again, my assumption has been it will be a referendum on Trump because people really, really don't like Donald Trump. Look at those numbers again. And that in the end, there'll be some people who come home to Biden. But perhaps that's not right. Maybe all of the net negatives of Donald Trump are already so baked into the cake and people are so bored of it that it won't make any serious difference. It'll just jog the Republican base to get out and Democrats will just shrug because it's just more of the same. That is certainly a possibility. And that's more of a possibility if Trump just avoids stepping on himself. Again, if all the focus is on Joe Biden, Trump is going to win. All Trump has to do is get out of the way. And when he does, it's actually quite good. So, for example, over the weekend, Donald Trump visited a Dairy Queen. And people in the media make fun of this sort of stuff. Donald Trump visiting a Dairy Queen especially because he didn't know what a blizzard was. And they say, well, you know, he's an elite. That's why he doesn't know what a blizzard was. But nobody nobody believes that. They think that Donald Trump just says whatever comes into his head, which makes him authentic. And they don't believe that Donald Trump is not a quote unquote man of the people when it comes to his diet. All he has is Diet Coke and McDonald's like every single day. Donald Trump is a fast food junkie. So here he was at the Dairy Queen. So everybody wants a blizzard. What the hell is it? So there he is handing out blizzards, right? I mean, this is like the Trump man of the people, right? That sort of thing plays. If he does this for the rest of the campaign, he could win easily. Like really, really, he could win. Do I think he's the best candidate? Do I think he'd be the best president? No, but is it, but do I think that he could win? Absolutely, he can win. He went to the UFC fight in Las Vegas the other night. And he was a big hit with the crowd. Here he was walking in. So he's walking in. He's shaking hands with uh, with Joe Rogan and hanging out with Dana White. Dana, of course, is a is a friend of, of Donald Trump's. One of the fighters actually came out of the ring to shake hands with Trump again. Trump does have energy and Trump does have the the sort of glitter that other Republican candidates do not. Now, at the same time, Trump is also perceived as wildly aggressive. And this is, I think, the key to winning the Republican base. So people have been asking one of the questions over the last couple of weeks has been, why is Ron DeSantis not rising in the polls? Why is why is he kind of stagnant in the polls? Right? What the polls show is that inside the Republican Party, Donald Trump is pulling somewhere in the high 40s. Those are not actually huge numbers for the incumbent candidate on the Republican side a person who was president of the United States until five minutes ago. He should be polling, you know, in the 70s or 80s. So why is he only down in the 40s? And the answer is he's not wildly popular, but he is perceived by a wide base in the Republican Party as the most aggressive candidate because he's wildly aggressive about everything. He also has the advantage of being able to say that if anyone else attacks him, they are doing the work of the mainstream media. The truth is that the mainstream media made Trump and they continue to make Trump in the sense that mainstream media opposition to Trump made him the president in 2016. Mainstream media opposition to Trump in 2020 made everybody in the Republican Party loyal to Trump. And it also made him almost unattackable in certain ways. Because if you mirror the attacks of the left on Donald Trump, Republican members of the base hate it. This is what every internal poll shows, by the way. I've seen internals from Iowa. And what they show is that even Republicans who are not warm toward Trump, when people attack Trump, they get defensive on him because he's been attacked so often by the left. Well, this gives Trump the license to be as aggressive as he could possibly want to be against everybody else. And people don't necessarily like it, but they do perceive it as, well, if he's going to be aggressive against this guy, maybe he will also be aggressive against my enemies. And that's what Republican base voters are looking for. This is why turnout for Trump was so high in 2020 and presumably would also be so high in 2024. So, for example, here he was 
going after Ron DeSantis in some very colorful terms. Uh, let's give it a shot. We did, I think, two or three rallies. I think three big, big rallies, thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And they came out. I said, you know, you're going to win. And he ended up winning. And then about three years later, they said to him, will you run against the president? And he said, I have no comment on that. I said, he has no comment. That means he's running. I said, that son of a is running. I got him elected. So I don't, I'm not a big fan of his, and he's highly overrated. Okay, so again, Trump can get away with that kind of stuff. But if you go after Trump and the Republican Party that way, it just doesn't work the same way because the Republican Party and its base have correctly sort of been trained to, in knee-jerk fashion, defend Trump no matter the attack, even if the attack is legitimate. So what about Ron DeSantis? What about DeSantis? Because he's the only viable candidate right now on the Republican side with a shot at Trump. Maybe that changes, but right now that happens to be the case. So what about that? Well, the problem for DeSantis is that the aggressiveness that he is displaying right now is either directed toward the Trump campaign, which makes sense. I mean, they're running against each other, or it's directed at sort of policy generally. Now, thing to notice about Donald Trump, does he ever talk in serious terms about policy? Every so often he releases a little video and the policy wonks either love it or hate it. But does it break through to the general public? People who love Trump, are they watching for his next policy announcement? Of course not. It's all attitudinal, right? It's the fact that Trump is by nature incredibly aggressive, incredibly reactive. And so for DeSantis, you know, when he goes on TV and he says things I love, I mean, he's saying things that I really like. Does it make a dent? So for example, here's Ron DeSantis over the weekend talking about cleaning house of the administrative state. Is this going to generate any sort of heat or light? Uh, you also have to bring this administrative state to heel. The bureaucracy in Washington is totally out of control. Uh, it's exerting power that is not there for it under the Constitution. And we need a president to come in and really, really clean house. And I will do that um, on day one. OK, I mean, Governor DeSantis is right about all of that. But is that sort of aggressiveness with regard to policy going to have any impact on the Republican race? I think the answer is no. The only thing that DeSantis can do, I think, to restore his, his somewhat flagging campaign at the moment is he needs to go hard directly at the media. And I don't mean that he has to say things about the media. I mean, he needs to go into unfriendly spaces and he needs to clock people. And the reason he, he needs to do that is because that is what made him popular in the first place. Dance with the gal that brung you. Ron DeSantis became a popular governor of Florida because the media were attacking him constantly and he was going up directly against them. You remember when, when 60 Minutes ran a bizarre story suggesting that he was being corrupt in his rollout of the vaccines. He went back hard at 60 Minutes. That's what he needs to do. He needs to go on Meet the Press. And he needs to shellack a moderator. He needs to go on The View and he needs to shellack the ladies of The View. He needs to do those things because the only way to beat Trump in a Republican primary is to out aggressive Trump because the common based assumption of the Republican Party right now is that anyone can beat Joe Biden. Anyone can beat Joe Biden. And if anyone can beat Joe Biden, why not the guy who the media really hate? Why not the guy who's going to be the most aggressive? And in fact, the polls are showing right now, again, the electability argument that DeSantis was making like a month ago, two months ago, they don't apply when Donald Trump is winning in the polls thanks to Joe Biden's weakness. Ironically, Biden's weakness is actually propping up Trump as a candidate. And so the only way that DeSantis is going to overcome that is by showing that he actually is a more aggressive candidate than Donald Trump. And you can't do that just by saying things. You actually have to go and you have to show in the face of opposition that you're going to do a thing. And the widespread perception of Trump is that he is always facing opposition because, in fact, he is. Some of it's of his own making. Right? Some of it's because... He makes foolish decisions with regard to classified documents, even if the indictment itself is unjustified because of the Hillary Clinton situation and all the rest. You don't have to steer right into it. But the, the thing is, opposition always helps Trump. It's the thing he knows instinctively. DeSantis right now doesn't have the opposition targeting him, and he isn't targeting the, the actual opposition that I think most Republicans feel passion for, and that is the coverage. That is the press. By the way, this is, this is true before Trump. I mean, go back to the 2012 presidential race, and you'll remember that Newt Gingrich briefly was leading that presidential race when he started attacking the press. There's a reason for that. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Take care of yourself, guys. Bye.